they went back to trying to do something, but it ain't got nothing to do with chains or straps. They seem to be just trying to push on the track, see if they can push it back down in the ground and make it stand upright. But it ain't working so well. I have a feeling they're gonna end up tipping this thing all the way over. Or somebody's gonna get hurt because there's way too many men standing way too close to it all. Yep, he's gonna try to push on that track again. See if he can't push it further in the ground. Like the other side's just gonna pop up out of the ground. That thing's been sitting there overnight, the suction on that other track that's completely buried in the mud. <laughs> They're not just gonna pop it up out of the ground. Man, I, I've never seen a crew that could have be have less sense. You know, again, this is ridiculousnessnessnessnessness at large, and with people that supposedly know what the hell they're doing. And you got men standing under the boom, standing in front of the track hoe, standing in between the tracks of the track hoe, and waving him forward as he stands there. You've got to be kidding me. One of the worst places that you could stand would be in the middle of those tracks, the guy in the white helmet, waving, waving at him, and he's standing right in front of the, the damn track though, an accident waiting to happen. Well, how can they even think that pushing on that track is going to do anything other than push that whole tractor further down on the ground? That track's only gonna handle so much before it breaks. Then they really will be messed up because then they can't even track the thing out if they do get it. Right. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I've seen track hoes get stuck just like this. I'm actually one of the few that you'll meet that's actually seen uh, three different sinkholes open right in front of my eyes. I used to be a pan operator. There was a backhoe digging a rim ditch and a little dozer down on the bottom of the, the pit where we were digging our, our, our pans were running, digging the dirt out to dig a lake. And I looked in the rear view mirror and that track hoe disappeared in a sinkhole. And I mean in the blink of an eye. And they just don't realize that guy, that guy is standing between the two tracks. You got another guy walking back and forth in front of the machine. Another guy leaning up against the track, and there's an operator in there operating that machine, pushing down on things. When something goes wrong, they're all in the worst position they could be in. You know, most of the time, you're required to stay at least 50 feet back from a track hoe that's in operation. But you got seven, eight, maybe nine people standing all within. The furthest one's probably you got guys standing right between the tracks of the machine. We wonder why or how people die running equipment. They put themselves in a very bad position. And now you got another guy climbing up on the other side of that track of the stuck track hoe. I guess he's trying to figure out how to get into the uh, the dry operator's seat, which I'm sure is flooded with water. And you probably can't get the door open. Yeah, they got it started, so he's in the seat. He's going to try to lift that boom up out of the mud, which ain't moving too fast. Yeah, I think I make them nervous sitting over here watching and videotaping. Yeah. That's one he heck of a attachment on the front. Yeah, he was cutting down and laying down the trees in the wetland. You got a guy standing on the other side 
of this thing to where if it does sink and tip over, he is right in the way. Right in the way. This this is this is not not a good happening here. Traco just revved himself up and he's going to try to lift himself out. That vibration of the machine running is only going to make it vibrate the ground and possibly sink it even further. They know what the heck they're doing. Trying to get leverage, leverage in the wetland. A little hard to do. All it does is sink right back down in the ground. 